morning, there are reports that actress Natasha Richardson is in critical condition following a skiing accident. The actress Natasha Richardson being declared brain dead. Imagine being a star in the world of cinema and theater, destined for greatness from a young age. This was the world of Natasha Richardson, a name synonymous with talent and tragedy. But who was she before the spotlight and what led to her untimely and shocking demise? Let's delve into the life of this remarkable actress and uncover the story behind the headlines. Oh my God, I can't believe you're together. Natasha's early years and family background. Born into a dynasty of theatrical talent, Natasha Richardson's story began on May 11, 1963, in London, England. Her lineage was nothing short of theatrical royalty. Her father, Tony Richardson, was an acclaimed director and producer, known for his innovative work in British theater and cinema. Her mother, Vanessa Redgrave, was a legendary actress, a towering figure in the acting world with an illustrious career spanning over six decades. Natasha's family tree was interwoven with the threads of artistry, setting the stage for her destined path in the performing arts. Natasha's childhood was steeped in the world of acting and storytelling. Her early exposure to the industry came naturally, given her family's deep involvement. It was almost as if the stage was her second home. By the age of four, Natasha had already made her first appearance in front of the camera in her father's film, The Charge of the Light Brigade. This early brush with cinema was a prophetic glimpse into her future career. Despite her early introduction to acting, Natasha's journey was not one of mere nepotism or effortless fame. She sought to carve her own path and earned her stripes through dedication and training. Her schooling at the prestigious Central School of Speech and Drama in London was a testament to her commitment to honing her craft. Here, she immersed herself in the world of dramatic arts, learning the intricacies of performance and developing a profound understanding of theater and film. Richardson's stage debut came with her role as Helen in A Midsummer Night's Dream, showcasing her versatility and natural affinity for the arts. This was followed by a remarkable portrayal of Ophelia in Hamlet, further cementing her status as a rising star in theater. Her performances were not just acts. They were manifestations of her deep-rooted passion for storytelling and her innate ability to bring characters to life. Her early career was a blend of stage and screen, reflecting her versatile talents. In 1986, Richardson's portrayal of Nina in The Seagull earned her the drama critic's most promising newcomer award. This accolade was a significant milestone, marking her as a force to be reckoned with in the London theater scene. It wasn't just her lineage that made her special. It was her unique ability to captivate audiences with her performances. As Natasha's career progressed, the lure of the big screen became inevitable. Her transition from the stage to film was a natural progression, driven by her evolving artistic aspirations and the growing demand from audiences to see her in cinematic roles. She began to balance her theatrical work with film projects, showcasing her adaptability as an artist. Rising star. As the dawn of the 1980s approached, Natasha Richardson, already steeped in a rich theatrical background, embarked on a journey that would see her transform from a promising actress into a star in her own right. Her ascendancy in the world of acting was marked by a blend of theatrical mastery and a burgeoning presence in cinema, laying the groundwork for a career that would be as varied as it was illustrious. After her initial success on stage, Natasha's career began to flourish. She continued to captivate audiences with her performances in London's West End, embodying a range of characters that showcased her remarkable versatility. Her portrayal of Nina in Chekhov's The Seagull not only won her critical acclaim, but also proved her ability to handle complex and emotionally charged roles. This period was a whirlwind of success and growth for Natasha, as she seamlessly transitioned between diverse roles, each time leaving a distinct imprint of her talent. In 1985, Natasha made her first significant foray into the world of cinema with the film Gothic directed by Ken Russell. This film, a fantastical portrayal of the famous knight that inspired Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein, 
saw Natasha playing the role of Mary Shelley herself. Her performance was a revelation, blending her theatrical experience with the demands of film acting. It was clear that Natasha was not just a stage actress, she was equally adept in front of the camera. Natasha's career trajectory was not just about her roles, but also about the choices she made. In an industry often dictated by typecasting and easy stereotypes, she sought out roles that challenged her, that pushed the boundaries of her acting prowess. This approach led her to a diverse range of characters, each different from the last, yet each performed with the same depth and conviction. In the early 1990s, Natasha returned to the stage, this time on Broadway, with a performance in Anna Christie that would earn her a Tony Award nomination. This marked a significant achievement in her career, solidifying her reputation as a formidable actress on both sides of the Atlantic. Her portrayal of the complex, emotionally scarred protagonist was not just a display of her talent, but a testament to her ability to connect with her audience on a deeply emotional level. The mid-1990s were a period of transition and growth for Natasha. She continued to balance her love for the stage with her film career. In 1998, she took on one of her most challenging and rewarding roles in the Broadway revival of Cabaret. Her portrayal of Sally Bowles was not just a performance, it was a force of nature. She won the Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical, a feat that underscored her versatility and her place as a star in the theater world. Her film career during this time also saw a surge. In 1998, she starred in The Parent Trap, a family comedy that would become one of her most recognized and beloved roles. As Elizabeth James, Natasha brought a warmth and charm to the screen, capturing the hearts of a new generation of fans. This role showcased a different side of Natasha, her ability to light up the screen with her presence and deliver a performance that was both heartwarming and humorous. What set Natasha apart was not just her talent, but her willingness to explore and take risks. She ventured into television, appearing in a range of projects that showcased her range as an actress. From historical dramas to contemporary thrillers, she brought the same level of dedication and excellence to each role. Behind the scenes, Natasha was known for her professionalism, her warmth, and her infectious sense of humor. She had a knack for making everyone around her feel at ease, whether it was fellow actors, crew, members, or fans. Her personality was as captivating off-screen as it was on, making her not just a respected figure in the industry, but also a beloved one. Natasha Richardson's rise to stardom was not just about her performances, but also about her journey as an artist. She navigated the challenges and triumphs of her career with grace and determination, never losing sight of her passion for acting. Her trajectory from a young actress with a famous last name to a star in her own right was a testament to her talent, hard work, and the unique spark that she brought to every role she played. In the constellation of stars in the acting world, Natasha shone brightly, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of audiences and colleagues alike. Success on screen and stage. As Natasha Richardson's career progressed into the late 1990s and early 2000s, she reached new heights of success both on screen and stage. Her ability to seamlessly transition between the two mediums not only showcased her versatility as an actress, but also cemented her status as a celebrated and respected figure in the world of performing arts. One of Natasha's most notable stage performances came in the form of her portrayal of Sally Bowles in the 1998 Broadway revival of Cabaret. This role, set against the backdrop of 1930s Berlin in the Kit Kat Club, allowed Richardson to showcase her dynamic range, from the vivacious and seductive performer to the vulnerable and emotionally torn character. Her performance earned her a Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical, a remarkable achievement that highlighted her exceptional talent and dedication to her craft. The role of Sally Bowles was not just a career milestone for Richardson. It was a role that she infused with a raw and poignant energy, captivating audiences night after night. Meanwhile, in cinema, Natasha continued to make her mark with a series of diverse and challenging roles. Her performance in The Parent Trap, 
1998, where she played the elegant and loving mother Elizabeth James, brought her widespread recognition and endeared her to a whole new generation of filmgoers. This family comedy showcased Natasha's ability to engage with a lighter, more humorous genre, proving her versatility as an actress capable of transcending boundaries and genres. In the realm of television, Richardson's performances were equally compelling. She starred in the 2001 miniseries Haven, where she played the role of Ruth Gruber, a real-life journalist and humanitarian. This performance further demonstrated her ability to embody complex, real-life figures, bringing depth and authenticity to the character. Her portrayal was not only a testament to her talent, but also a reflection of her willingness to tackle serious and challenging material. As the 2000s progressed, Natasha continued to balance her film and stage careers with remarkable agility. Her return to the Broadway stage in 2005 in the role of Blanche Du Bois in A Streetcar Named Desire was yet another highlight of her career. Taking on such an iconic and demanding role, Richardson delivered a performance that was both powerful and deeply moving, capturing the fragile and tragic essence of Blanche. Her film roles during this period were equally impressive. In Made in Manhattan, 2002, she played Caroline Lane, a high society figure, with a performance that was both elegant and nuanced. This romantic comedy, while a departure from her more serious roles, demonstrated her ability to adapt to different genres and appeal to a wide range of audiences. Natasha's choice of roles often reflected her own personal interests and passions. She was drawn to characters that were complex, multifaceted, and challenged the status quo. Her filmography during these years showcased a deliberate and thoughtful selection of roles, each chosen for its unique contribution to her artistic journey. Behind the scenes, Natasha was known for her commitment to her craft. She was a meticulous preparer, often immersing herself fully in her roles to deliver authentic and compelling performances. Her colleagues frequently praised her for her professionalism, her collaborative spirit, and her dedication to bringing the best out of not only herself, but also those around her. Throughout her career, Richardson's performances were consistently lauded by critics and audiences alike. Her ability to connect with her characters on a profound level resonated with viewers, making her one of the most respected actresses of her generation. Her success was not just in the accolades and awards she received, but in the impact she had on her audiences. In both her stage and screen roles, Natasha Richardson demonstrated a rare combination of emotional depth, technical skill, and a captivating presence. Her performances were not merely acts, they were experiences that left a lasting impression. Her success on screen and stage was a reflection of her relentless pursuit of artistic excellence, her fearless approach to challenging roles, and her undying passion for the art of acting. Personal life and relationships. Beyond the glare of the spotlight and the accolades of her professional life, Natasha Richardson's personal life was a tapestry rich with love, family, and personal growth. Her journey offstage and outside the film sets was as compelling and heartwarming as her performances, marked by deep relationships, a loving family, and personal triumphs and challenges. Natasha's first significant relationship in the public eye was with producer Robert Fox. They met in the bustling world of London's theatre scene, a common ground that nurtured their connection. Their romance blossomed amidst the backdrop of artistic creativity and shared passions. The couple married in 1990, but their union was relatively short-lived. As Natasha's career took off and her star continued to rise, the pressures and demands of their professional lives led them down separate paths. They divorced in 1992, but the relationship played a significant part in Natasha's life, marking her early years in the world of fame and art. It was during her Broadway performance in Anna Christie in 1993 that Natasha's life took a turn that would shape her personal and professional future. It was here that she met Liam Neeson, a fellow actor with a burgeoning career. Their chemistry was undeniable, both on and off the stage. Natasha, still married to Robert Fox at the time, found herself at a crossroads. In a tale that mirrored the romantic film she starred in, Natasha followed her heart, leading to a passionate and enduring love story with Neeson. Natasha and Liam's relationship blossomed rapidly, 
fueled by their shared love for acting and a deep, personal connection. They married in 1994 in a ceremony that celebrated their love and their shared journey in the world of acting. Their marriage was not just a union of two individuals, but a merging of two lives deeply rooted in the arts. They became one of the most admired and respected couples in Hollywood, known for their mutual respect, affection, and unwavering support for each other's careers. The couple welcomed their first son, Michael, in 1995, and their second son, Daniel, in 1996. Motherhood was a role that Natasha embraced with the same passion and dedication she gave to her acting. She was known to be a loving, hands-on mother, deeply involved in her son's lives. Her family was her anchor, providing her with a sense of balance and grounding amidst the often chaotic world of show business. Natasha's relationship with her family extended beyond her immediate household. She shared a close bond with her mother, Vanessa Redgrave, and her sister, Jolie Richardson, both acclaimed actresses in their own right. This bond was not just familial, but also professional as they occasionally shared the screen and stage, creating memorable moments in acting history. Throughout her marriage to Liam Neeson, Natasha was known to be fiercely loyal, supportive, and loving. The couple's relationship was a testament to their shared values, mutual respect, and deep love. They navigated the challenges of Hollywood together, maintaining a strong, united front in both their personal and professional lives. Natasha's personal life was also marked by her philanthropic efforts and advocacy. Inspired by her father Tony Richardson's death due to AIDS-related causes, she became a passionate supporter of AIDS-related charities. Her work in this field was not just a tribute to her father, but also a reflection of her deep empathy and commitment to making a difference in the world. In her personal relationships, Natasha was known for her warmth, her infectious sense of humor, and her ability to connect with people on a genuine level. Her friends and colleagues often spoke of her kindness, her graciousness, and her ability to make those around her feel valued and appreciated. She had a unique gift for touching people's lives, both through her performances and her personal interactions. Tragically, Natasha's life was cut short in a skiing accident in 2009, a devastating blow to her family, friends, and fans. Her death left a profound impact on those who knew her and admired her work. However, the legacy she left behind in her personal life was as significant as her professional achievements. Natasha Richardson's life was a portrait of love, resilience, and the enduring power of family and relationships. Her journey off-screen and outside the theater was a testament to the strength of her character and the depth of her heart. The Tragic Accident the narrative of Natasha Richardson's life took a sudden and heartbreaking turn in March 2009, culminating in an event that would not only shake her family to its core, but also leave a lasting imprint on the public consciousness. This chapter, while painful, is crucial in understanding the fragility of life and the unexpected ways in which it can unravel. In early March 2009, Natasha decided to take a brief respite from her bustling life in the limelight, Accompanied by her two sons, she traveled to the Mont Tremblant Resort in Quebec, Canada. The trip was intended as a leisurely getaway, a chance for Natasha to enjoy some quality time with her children, while her husband Liam Neeson was filming in Toronto. On March 16th, Natasha, not an experienced skier, enrolled in a beginner's ski lesson. It was a seemingly innocuous decision, one made in the spirit of enjoying the picturesque surroundings and perhaps, learning a new skill. The day was clear, the slopes inviting, and the atmosphere at the resort cheerful and relaxed. Natasha, always up for new experiences, embarked on her lesson with her characteristic enthusiasm. Tragically, during the lesson, Natasha experienced a fall. She lost her balance during a free ski turn and tumbled down the slope. Initially, the fall seemed minor. Natasha was conscious, alert, and even joking with her instructor. There was no visible serious injury, and she reportedly refused medical attention, a decision that seemed reasonable at the moment, 
given the apparently benign nature of the fall. However, what appeared to be a minor incident soon escalated into a dire emergency. Within hours of the fall, Natasha began to complain of a headache. The headache intensified rapidly, and it became clear that her condition was far more serious than initially thought. This marked the beginning of a harrowing and ultimately tragic sequence of events. Natasha was first taken to a local hospital near the ski resort. As her condition worsened, the gravity of the situation became starkly apparent. She was airlifted to the Hôpital du Sacré-Cœur de Montréal, a larger facility better equipped to handle severe cases. By the time she arrived, Natasha was in a critical condition. Liam Neeson, upon learning of his wife's accident, rushed to Montreal from Toronto, a journey of both physical and emotional magnitude. He arrived to find Natasha in a devastating state, her life hanging in the balance. The family, friends, and loved ones gathered, holding on to hope, but facing a grim reality. The medical diagnosis was a severe traumatic brain injury, caused by an epidural hematoma, bleeding between the skull and the brain's covering. This type of injury can be deceptive. Victims may appear fine after the initial trauma, only to deteriorate rapidly as pressure builds inside the skull. This phenomenon, known as the talk and die syndrome, is particularly insidious because it can delay the recognition of the severity of the injury. On March 18th, two days after the accident, the heart-wrenching decision was made to remove Natasha from life support. Her injuries were irreversible, and she had been declared brain dead. At the young age of 45, Natasha Richardson's vibrant life came to a tragic end. Natasha's death sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. Tributes poured in from colleagues, friends, and fans around the world, all expressing deep sorrow and shock at the loss of such a talented and beloved actress. Her family, particularly her husband and sons, faced an unimaginable loss, a void left by a wife, mother, and companion whose life was cut tragically short. Legacy and Impact The untimely departure of Natasha Richardson left a profound void in the worlds of film, theater, and beyond. Her legacy, however, extends far beyond the roles she portrayed on screen and stage. It's woven into the fabric of the arts community, the lives she touched, and the changes she inspired, making her a figure of enduring influence and significance. In the realm of performing arts, Natasha's impact is indelible. Her versatility and depth as an actress redefined what it meant to seamlessly transition between the intensity of theater and the subtlety of film. Natasha brought a unique combination of vulnerability and strength to her roles, leaving a lasting impression on audiences and critics alike. Her performances in Cabaret, The Parent Trap, and A Streetcar Named Desire, among others, stand as testaments to her remarkable talent and dedication to her craft. She showed the world that an actress could be both fiercely powerful and deeply sensitive, paving the way for future generations of performers. Natasha's influence extended to the Broadway community, where she was not only a celebrated actress but also a beloved figure. Her commitment to theater, evident in her Tony Award-winning performance in Cabaret, made her a role model for aspiring actors. Her approach to acting, deeply immersive and relentlessly passionate, served as a benchmark for excellence. Natasha's legacy in theater is one of inspiring dedication, a reminder of the power of live performance to move and transform audiences. Beyond the stage and screen, Natasha's tragic death had a significant and lasting impact on the awareness of ski safety. The circumstances surrounding her accident brought to light the importance of wearing helmets while skiing, leading to increased public discussions about safety measures on the slopes. In the aftermath, there was a notable rise in helmet usage among skiers and snowboarders, a change partly attributed to the heightened awareness stemming from her accident. This shift in safety consciousness is a poignant part of Natasha's legacy, one that continues to safeguard lives. Natasha's commitment to charitable causes, particularly her work in the fight against AIDS, is another crucial aspect of her legacy. Inspired by her father's battle with the disease, she became an ardent supporter of AIDS-related charities and fundraising efforts. 
Her involvement in events like the AMFAR's Cinema Against AIDS, GALA, and the American Foundation for AIDS Research underscored her compassion and dedication to making a difference. Through her advocacy, Natasha helped raise awareness and funds for AIDS research, demonstrating the power of celebrity influence for positive social change. The personal impact Natasha had on those who knew her is also a significant part of her legacy. Colleagues, friends, and family members often speak of her warmth, kindness, and the positive energy she brought to every interaction. Her ability to connect with people on a genuine level, whether on set or in her personal life, left a lasting impression on those who had the privilege of knowing her. This personal legacy is perhaps the most poignant, as it speaks to the character of the woman behind the roles she so brilliantly portrayed. Natasha's family, particularly her husband Liam Neeson, and their two sons, Michael and Daniel, continue to uphold her legacy. Michael, in a touching tribute to his mother, chose to change his last name to Richardson, a decision reflecting his desire to keep his mother's memory alive and close to him. Both sons have spoken about the influence their mother had on their lives, both in their personal values and their professional paths. This family legacy, nurtured in love and remembrance, keeps Natasha's spirit alive in the most personal and profound way. In the years following her death, Natasha Richardson has been remembered in various tributes and memorials, each celebrating her life and contributions to the arts. Her memory is often evoked in discussions about theater and film, serving as a reminder of the impact one artist can have on their industry.